Hello all. I am Akash Rajan, Research Scholar, Department of Mechanical Engineering, College of Engineering, Trivandrum. Today, I will be narrating the procedures for performing model analysis on a cantilever beam. ANSYS is a multi-purpose software for performing finite element analysis on structures, fluid, electromagnetics, etc. In today's video lecture, I will be demonstrating the various steps involved in the model analysis of a cantilever beam. First of all, we start with the element selection under preprocessor. Click on preprocessor. Then click on element type. Click on add, edit, delete. We can select a large number of elements based on the analysis requirement from the ANSYS element reference library. Click on the add button. For modeling a cantilever beam, there are different options in ANSYS element library. The simplest one is the three-dimensional beam element which is coming under the class of line elements. Click on beam. For this analysis we choose the three noted 189 element. Beam 189 is a three noted Timoshenko beam element. If you want to get more help regarding this element you can refer to the ANSYS element reference library. In order to directly access the help for this element click on options and then click on the help button when you click on the help button from the options tab you will be directly guided to the help regarding 3 noted beam 189 you can scroll through the help to get more details regarding the element formulations shape functions degrees of freedom surface loads, special functions, and element product restrictions. Once you select the element, the next step is to input the material properties. For the present case, we choose the material as steel. Under the structural tab, click on linear, elastic, isotropic, and there will be two material constants to be inputted. One is the elastic modulus and two is the Poisson's ratio. For the material steel, we use the value 210 GPA for Young's modulus. For inputting 10 to the power 9, you can use E9. For Poisson's ratio, we input the value as 0.3. Please make a note that even if you don't input the value of person's ratio for a line element, the software will automatically take care because this person's ratio is not coming under this formulation. Press OK. Another key input for performing modal analysis is the material density. You can click on the density and input 7800 for the density value of steel. That completes the material input. Next step is to input the cross section of the beam. In the previous versions of ANSYS, the sections were input through the real constants but in the newer versions, the beam and shell sections are input from the sections tab. Click on beam, common sections. Every section is denoted by a section ID and a name which is arbitrary. For the present analysis, I give the name as square. You can click on the cross section type and select whichever one is required. 
for any other cross sections other than listed under the standard sections there is an option for inputting the custom section this is called a user section we have to input the breadth and height for the square cross, cross section for the present analysis I'm going to use a one centimeter square cross section if we want to view the cross section and its properties again you click on the preview button under the beam tool here we get a view of the beam cross section you can see the area the moment of inertia the polar moment of inertia the warping constant and the shear correction factor please make a note that ANSYS works like a calculator and hence proper units must be maintained for each and every input once you start with SI unit you have to maintain the same for the entire analysis next we go to the modeling tab for creating the line ANSYS modeling can be top-down approach or bottom-up approach bottom-up approach starts with the creation of key points then lines then areas then volumes while the top-down approach we first create the volumes which include areas which include line and which includes key points for this analysis we follow the bottom-up approach we first create two key points which marks the endpoints of the beam you can either give the value of key point number ANSYS has got its own automated key point numbering scheme. If you leave this field blank, ANSYS will automatically start numbering from 1. For the present beam, the length is taken as 30 cm. The first key point is input at the origin with location x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0 and z is equal to zero click on the apply button the next key point is created at x is equal to 30 e minus 2 I'm using 30 e minus 2 since I'm inputting all the values in meters this creates two key points in the xy plane next step in a bottom up approach is to model a line connecting two key points click on lines straight line click on key point number one and then on two this creates a line between key point one and two next step in the analysis is meshing there is a tab called mesh tool which is nothing but a palette which consists of all the important options under the meshing tree. The first step is to set the line size for this particular analysis. For getting good results, you can refine more and more. For the present case, I will be using 50 divisions. Click on set lines and click line number one and click OK under the number of element divisions I'm going to input number 50 click OK this divides the line into 50 equal divisions the next step is to mesh the divided line click on mesh and pick the line OK this has converted the solid element into finite element model if you want to see the elements and its numbers go to plot controls numbering check the node number on and press ok this shows 
the number of nodes in the system. If you want a list view of the following number of nodes, click on list and click nodes. You can see the number of the node as well as its location in the XYZ plane. If you want to view the number of elements, again go to list elements list elements nodes and attributes this gives a list of elements you can see that element number one with material type one and the name one the coordinate system real constants and sections and this gives the nodal connectivity for a particular element element one is between nodes one four and three You can zoom in and zoom out. This is element number one, connecting node number one, four, and three. The fit to view button enable as to fit the geometry in the present screen. That marks the end of machine. I can switch off the numbering again by going to numbering and unchecking the node numbers. The next step in the analysis is to input the boundary conditions. We have a fixity at the left end for the present case. Go to define loads under apply structural displacement and on nodes. You can pick the left Click on OK. The beam element has six degrees of freedom, which are UX, UY, UZ, rotation about X, rotation about Y, and rotation about Z axis. Either you can check all these, or a more easy option is to click on all degrees of freedom, give the value as zero, and press OK. This completes the finite element modeling of a cantilever beam. The next step is to set the analysis type. Go to analysis type, click on new analysis, click on model and OK. Go to the analysis options tab and select the extraction method as block length source. You can give the number of fundamental and above frequencies you are interested in in this time. For the present case, I'm using 10 number of modes. ANSYS then asks for the start and end frequency for the analysis. If I'm unaware of the starting and ending frequency or the frequency range of the structure, I can give both the values as zeros and this will automatically run from a start frequency of zero to a higher frequency of around 10 rise to 8. The next step is to solve the particular model. Click on solve and current load step and press OK button. Once the solution is complete and this will display solution is done. Click on close the next step of the finite element analysis is general post processor. General post processor helps us to review the results of the analysis. In order to get a summary of the present analysis, click on result summary. You can see the natural frequencies listed. In order to separately view the natural frequencies and mode shapes, go to read results, click on buy pick. A tab or pane is being opened. You can see 93.050 repeated twice, 580.10 repeated twice, and we have a single mode coming at the seventh place 2480. In order to view the first mode, click on set number one and click on read. In order to view the mode shapes, Go to plot controls. Under the plot controls, 
you have animate in order to view the mode shape click on mode shape under DOF solution you can either view the deformed shape alone or deformed plus undeformed shape for the present case I'm going to use deformed plus undeformed shape and press OK now you can view the first mode shape the screen looks blank since the motion is not in the XY plane in order to change the plane settings click on the right pane go to oblique view or you can change the view by clicking here and change the axis to axis at plane you can see the beam is being bent in the XY plane about the Y axis so this frequency belongs to the Y bending in order to view the mode shape again go to upload controls click animate mode shapes OK and this is the first bending mode about the Y axis you can increase the speed of animation by moving the pane button towards the left side in order to view the next mode go to buy pick click the set number 2 and click on read go to plot controls animate mode shape ok again there is no motion observed in the x exit plane we can shift the view to xy plane by clicking on the right pane now you can see the deformation occurring in the xy plane about z axis this is the bending about z axis go to plot controls animate mode shape deformed plus undeformed now you can see the bending mode about z axis if you observe the results the frequency is being repeated and is having the same number here the eigenvalues are same but the eigenvectors are different the two mode shapes are not in the same plane this occurs because if you go back to the preprocessor and you observe the section properties of the beam we have given a square cross section the moment of inertia is about i x and i y will about i z and i y is the same and hence we get the same natural frequency with different mode shapes in order to avoid the repetition of modes you can just change the squared cross section to a rectangle type I change dimension to 5 cm press OK again go to the solution pane click solve and current load step and press OK button once the solution is done you can again review the results by just clicking on results summary under general post processor now if you observe you can see a drastic change in the frequency when it was a square section frequency was repeated in both directions but you can see a considerable change in the second frequency which is not similar to the first this change is observed because the cross section has changed to a rectangle type at the moment of inertia about the two axes are not the same in order to view the cross section of the beam you can go to plot controls style size and shape and enable the display of element to own click OK this shows the orientation of the rectangular element in the XY plane you can shift the view by clicking on the right pins this is the cross section of the beam if I change the cross section to the square one which I used before go to common sections and again change back to 0 0.01 1 centimeter press OK and refresh the view and you can see the cross section has changed this has to be done for each and every analysis before understanding which direction the load is applied thank you for watching this lecture